Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Comesa Radio Africa, the voice of Comesa, the organization that everybody wants to be associated with. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. That's our philosophy. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That's the idea. I'm Sam Zima, your host, the CEO and executive business coach at Comesa GOC International. We welcome our guest, Prudence Mavizela, the CEO of Dynamic DNA. Greetings, Prudence. Good afternoon, Mr. Tsuma. How are you doing during lockdown period? I'm doing very well, and how are you doing? Ah, all good, all good. Uh, yeah. We are keeping strong, we are keeping focused, we are keeping positive within these trying times. That's beautiful. And, and, and today you have to keep warm too. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. I'm in my office right now, my home office, yes. and I have my heater on, so I'm definitely warm. Yeah, so, so, so. it's the same here. And I think the past three days, I'm not quite sure if we, we had a snow on the, on the dragon's back or what. No, we have. So I think we had a, 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 a cold front that hit us. Yeah. So that's probably one of the reasons why in Gauteng we are experiencing these. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the time of the year we have to be getting used to that type of a weather. Most definitely. Most Good. Definitely. Th thank you for accepting my invitation. Uh, it's not an interview, it's a conversation, right? Of course, it yeah. has to be. Absolutely. I love, I love conversations because an interview is more intimidating. And then, uh, you know, people shrink up and they don't really get to uh, put in all the efforts that they would have if it was more of a conversation. So, most definitely. Lovely, lovely. Let's maybe start with uh, easy, easy things, you know. Um, I have introduced you, uh, I just say you are Prudence Mavitzela, but for somebody that is listening, that doesn't say much, yeah? <laughs> no, most definitely not. Um, there must... and, and, and it shouldn't, and it shouldn't, you know. Um, uh, you know, when someone is asking you who you are, I'm sure they're not just wanting to know the name. They want to know the underlying... Um, individual, you know, where they come from, what they're about, what they do, what they strive for. So uh, I agree. Yeah. Asking that question and answering it. Yeah. In, in, my, in my culture, when somebody asks you, who are you? And then you say, I'm Sam Zima. They say, listen, I'm talking to you. <laughs> yes. Yes. So let's let's so let's do that. Let's talk to Prudence Marisela. Who is Prudence Marisela? What are your full names? And where did you grow up? Yeah, so Prudence Mavitella grew up in Soweto, Pimbo. Yes. I grew up with my late mother, my grandmother, grandfather. I have a little sister who is in matric right now. You can only imagine with matriculants now back mm. at school. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I am an individual that uh, is 30 years of age. Mm, mm. I started, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. That, that, that is what I want, <laughs> that is what I want to get to, but we'll get to that one later. Just yeah. underline that. Entrepreneur at heart. I love, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so entrepreneur at heart. Um, I started my business at 23 years of age. Mm. I studied uh, triple B E empowerment at Wix, mm. and that purely speaks to and giving back, ensuring that there's meaningful empowerment that is given to individuals, especially the youth. I also fall part of the youth. I know I speak bluntly about, you know, I want to empower the youth. Yeah. And so I don't fall part of, yeah. of, of the youth category. Yeah. Um, I have two kids, um, 
one son and uh, one daughter, mm. and I am also married. I mm. got married very young. Mm. I think my husband saw that this is a gem. This is a, a, a <laughs> you know, with this one, um, I, I, I definitely <laughs> have to take her now before she starts uh, blossoming into something that the world will start um, seeing. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and I got married at 19 mm. years of age. Mm. Uh, and, and I, I, when I got married, I know it's in the black culture, yes. when you get married young, they think it's because you were pregnant. I wasn't pregnant at all. Mm. My husband just saw an opportunity to say, if I want to take this young lady, mm. I need to take her the right way. And, so, and, and the dad did not disrupt your education, right? It did not, not at all. It actually pumped me up even more. Because at that time, um, I started uh, uh, studying at Vega, doing advertising and marketing. Uh, I also worked from a young age, is something that I did not mention. I started working at 13 years of age. I know that's a, an age that most people don't. Illegally, you can't work at that age. But I had to work because uh, my parents, uh, my grandparents, no one was working at home. And mm. because I had a mature mind at that age, mm. I knew that the person that I had to really get up and start it could was me. Mm. I put that onto my shoulders and I had to go and start with a cell phone top. You're fainting away, Prudence, if you can just speak a little bit louder. So um, I was saying that uh, I started working at 13, 13 years of age at a uh, cell phone shop. So mm. I would be Saturday, and I would I was the customer service consultant there. Yes. I was, customers would come in by a time when their phones were damaged. I would take take in their details and then take it to the technician. Mm. So I was that front end individual, and I'd get paid something like seventy rands per week. Mm. And that was enough because I would go to uh, a, a retail shop, come back with some food, take it back home. Mm. Mm. So that is how I I started really working and, and becoming very, very independent at that age. And I kept growing and growing. Um, at, and when I continued with my studies after matric, I matriculated in 2007 and then went into Vega to start marketing and marketing and advertising, as, as I've mentioned. Mm. And as I was doing marketing and advertising and married as well, I would do promotional work, you know, mm. to, to ensure that I still continued giving back to my family. Mm. And once I completed uh, studying, I then found work. Um, and, 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 yeah. and, 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 but tell me, if you were to describe your parents, what, what kind of, what type of parents would you say they were? Or they, are um, they still alive right there? So my, no, my mother uh, passed away uh, um, probably two years after I got. Uh, but, yeah, so how I would describe her was she was strong-willed, she was a determined woman. She was very positive in the way that she lo looked at life. And she uh, is one of the people that uh, empowered me to be the kind of woman that I am today. Mm. Uh, and then when it comes to my father, he has the entrepreneurial aspect to, to life. I think I got that more from him. Is he still uh, an entrepreneur even okay. now? Yes, he's still around. Um, and when I spoke earlier on about my background in that cell phone shop that I used to go to, it was my father's. Oh, I see. So you come yes. from a from a from a family of entrepreneurs. I come from a family of entrepreneurs, um, and and I would uh, see him work. I would see him 
counting the money. I'll see him uh, making the uh, making us uh, as the kids work for the money, which is something that so so you 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 so well. you saw all the struggles and all tribulations of business life from a young age from mm. a young age. Mm. Yeah. Will you say that 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 is that is something that is very helpful uh, in terms of entrepreneurship? No, most definitely, because if if you think about entrepreneurship and if you go to uh, college or university to study it, it's by the book. Yes, it comes to the practical element of it. So I got to experience that firsthand. So hence, even with my uh, years of experience, when I do things, um, I'm more of a practical person, not necessarily more academic. Mm. So you always have to, so even my mind, how I do things, I do it in a practical form. Yes, I do at times fall back to the book as to what it says, but it's always great if you have that uh, overview from a, 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 a skill perspective. Mm, mm. And and tell me, your sibling is she also that entrepreneur? So uh, <laughs> my sibling. So I have a younger sister I mentioned. So yes. Not. I, I'm sure she has, but it just has to be unleashed a bit. Yes. Uh, the person that is very entrepreneurial is my son. Yes. My son is only eight years old now, but he started his business when he was six years of age. I know you're thinking. A business prudence, yes. So mm. my son is Umpile Madisela. If you check him out, you'll see the type of work that he done, type of uh, uh, business offering that he does. So he has bookmarks that he makes. He used to make them handmade, and then he would sell those at ten rands and then wow. get money of it. Mm. So, so I've also taken it back now to to the household to teach my kids as well, that you can work for your money. If you want money, you can you can make it yourself as mm, well. Mm, mm. Wow. And, and tell me, did, did, didn't that uh, rob you, you from time from being involved in the, in the township with other children doing other things in the community, or did you manage to still do that as you were growing uh, up? As I was growing up? Yeah. Because it looks so, like as you became aware of yourself, you found yourself working with your dad in your dad's business. Uh, were there time for you to do other things in the township with other children, or it was always too hectic for you? Sure. That's a very personal one right there. But um, So for me... Like I'd mentioned earlier on, my mind was very mature, Mm. uh, probably because of the type of uh, uh, weight that that was on my shoulders. To me, I had to grow up very quickly. Mm. Uh, And with uh, growing up very quickly, you start stuff at a very young age. Yes. So doing other things, I never really had time for. You know, yeah. even just now, I'm still catching up to the fact that I have to now start having friends. Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. Uh, because all I've known is my family, and yes. I've also known the, uh, my colleagues, my team members. I've known the business element of it. Mm. So everything else for me, uh, I'm still catching up to now. The mm. Friend relationships and mm. trusting new people in my yes. life. Yes, but it's it's never late. I mean, you have such a solid foundation, and I'm sure being in business, it's clear to you that now it, you probably call it networking, which which is getting no, to know people. We call it that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting to know people, and and once you build that relationship with your fellow uh, uh, business people, they 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 are your friends, isn't it? That's your world, yes. isn't it? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. And tell me, how was your schooling? Uh, I mean, you, if you so focus, I, I, I guess uh, you wouldn't have gone to triple A if you didn't produce good results at school. Mm-hmm. So I was sure. I, so the, the focus in me, the drive in me at the time and in, even still now was burning. Uh, I was uh, one of those top students at school. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you a personal experience that uh, occurred after matric. 
Yes. Remember, they had given us letters that we we, we could uh, go, the top students could go, and we had a, a whole ceremony. Mm. And it was late at night. At mm. home, we didn't have a car. Uh, and obviously, no one really asked you uh, how you're going to get there. Mm. Uh, we lived opposite to a, a, a golf course. Mm. Uh, because I lived in Pimville and the school was in El Dorado Park. I remember walking with my then boyfriend, now husband, yes. across across the the, the the golf course to walk to the to the school. And I was presented with top student awards in mathematics, in science, in English. So I was one of those students that really put in the effort and it really did show. Mm. Mm, wow. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. what, 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 what kind of results did you achieve in, in grade 12, if you don't mind? Yeah, so, I mean, it was exceptional results. Like, uh, in, in maths, I got, an, uh, I think, a B, if not an A. Mm. I got, uh, I think, a B in science as well. Uh, so, so it was exceptional results. So yeah. are you one of those students who... Uh, Parated by the MEC of Education for Outing? Uh, if, they, if they did, they probably didn't find me. <laughs> <laughs> MEC, if you're listening right now, I'm still here. <laughs> no, but that's, that's quite inspirational. And, and, and then you decided that you go to AAA. Why? what happened so after matric like any other child whether you come from an advantaged or disadvantaged background what will happen is you still think as though you are going to get the opportunity to go and study at a university or college paid for by your parents even though you understand the situation at home i still felt as though you know, I'm, I'm going to go and study medicine. That's what I wanted to study. I wanted to study uh, medicine. I wanted to be a doctor. And the reality became, uh, it's in effect, after receiving my results, mm. when uh, I, you know, it was evident that no one was going to be able to pay for my fees. I see. So what I, what I did was I started asking around. I was very lucky in January that year. I asked around and there was my I mean, early in the morning to say, you know what, um, her name is Lindy. My aunt has uh, said that there's an opportunity where they're offering bursaries and it's like something like 10 kilometers away in Bara. You mm. can go, and today's apparently the last day, go and see if you can. Mm. I remember I washed very quickly. I got up and I walked to go to Bara. Mm. I got there and there was a huge line. I stood there the whole time. I didn't even have money to buy food. I stood there. They uh, took down my details. Um, they interviewed me and they said, no, we'll let you know. After a week, they called me back to say, here's an opportunity. You got the bursary. And uh, I, that's how I got into, into Vega. And, 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 and who was offering that bursary? It was Vega. Vega. Vega themselves. Oh. So, so they had set up a a, a school in, in 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 Soweto. Yes. That was uh, part of their initiative. Oh, so so now tell me, the, the Vega and uh, Triple A is is it, it one and the same thing? It, 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 no. They are in the Vega same group, though. But they are in the same group. Yes, yes, okay. So they were giving you a bursary for you to go to Triple A to do your marketing. Is it marketing and advertising? Marketing and advertising. So Vega was offering me a bursary to study with Vega uh -huh. a, a marketing and advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, this is very interesting. I mean, they must have seen something in you. I don't think it's probably only the, res the results. Isn't that perhaps you were very much already clued up in terms of e e commercial business or business from your experience at home? Or, or, or is it because of the subjects you did in high school? Which, which were they, by the way? Just a reminder. Subjects I did, maths, I did science, I did geography, uh, English, 
Africans, obviously. Nothing commercial. And economic. economic. Okay, economics. Economics. Yeah. So I'm very keen to know what kind of questions they asked you that had nothing to do with your studies. Mm. Because I'm, I'm, I'm inclined uh, to think that they must have seen that you are exposed to business, right? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, it probably goes back to what I'd mentioned earlier on with me working at a young age, but most probably also in the manner at which I approached the interview. Um, they probably did see the, the younger me that was very driven, that wanted this opportunity so badly, and that was willing to also work for it. Mm. Because what happened thereafter is after I completed the qualification, uh, uh, and, and maybe let me go back to during during that period, I would walk every day yes. uh, to the institution, mm. to the institution and back. And I would go into the institution and not still not have food, um, and others would have. You know, you, you know, uh, I was one of those that didn't even have uh, clothing. Mm. fashionable clothing and others would have but I didn't get intimidated by that I always focused mm. on the bigger picture I wanted to ensure that the livelihoods of my family were taken care of by mm. me mm. so once I completed I was also top student wow. at the institution yes mm. <laughs> and this was someone that uh, didn't have much you know I was Probably one of those individuals, when you look at me, you think, oh my goodness, this one. She, because of the how I, I didn't have fashionable clothes, I didn't have money, mm. you know, I didn't speak the lingo like they did, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, there, mm. there, was, there was a lot of hardships, um, mm. but uh, a lot of focus and drivenness for me mm. to ensure that my, my life was set. Mm. Looks like your profession found you, eh? It, it mm. You know, it's so it's so amazing that uh, sometimes these struggles that we go through, they actually define us. Yeah, they determine our path. A hundred percent, hundred percent. So if you think about what I do now, uh, the type of business that I have, you know, it talks purely to empowerment, to education. It talks mm. to. Mm gap, the digital divide, the inequality gap, you know, so um, it also talks to the funding element that the students would normally not have mm. versus also, you know, the traveling costs and mm. looking at an individual who is at disadvantage, how else can you ensure that that person gets fully empowered within the education system? Beautiful. Let's hold it there. This is exactly the point I want us to get into uh, when we come back from the break, how did you decide on what you are doing right now? We'll be back. Huh.